these days of trials, we see the tribulation coming upon us very quickly. Know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by him. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hey, Pastor Joe here. I normally come to you guys with a teaching capacity, but today I'm coming to you with a preaching capacity because I'm not speaking as much to the totally lost right now as I'm speaking to the so-called body of Christ. I'm specifically speaking to the ones who call themselves Christian if asked, but in reality, they're not. If you're a Christian, that means Christ-like. Jesus said, if you love me, follow my commandments. And the evidence, I, I'm not going to get into teaching. The evidence of the Spirit, if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. So again, I'm, I'm not going to be speaking a whole lot of Scripture, but I'm just talking directly to the lukewarm. If you're one of those people who go to church every December 25th. That's not the birth of Christ, but that's in other videos. If you're one of those quote Christians who show up at Easter Ishtar, again, more videos, not going to get into that. It's good to show up at church. Okay. But if those are the only couple days that you're showing up in church, you need to think about that, okay? And for those of you that are in church and you're in there every Wednesday, every Sunday, every Bible study and everything else, that's even better, okay? But my question to you is, when you go home, do you ever open up that dusty Bible and read it? And if you do, you're going to find out some amazing truths that are not told from the pulpit area. A lot of times, uh, some of these things are um, uncomfortable for pastors, and pastors need to just get to the word, okay? All the things that are going on in the world right now, I will teach you one thing. I am not sarim, not sarim, okay? That means branches, and it can also mean watchmen, okay? I am both. Jesus said he's the vine, we are the branches. So I am a branch, and I am also a watchman. And unfortunately, my microphone doesn't let me do it because it has noise canceling on it. But I would be blowing my shofar right now, and symbolically, I am blowing my shofar. And the reason for this is because I need to warn people. I'm a watchman on the wall. I see trouble coming. And I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, there's going to be some world-changing events within the next week. If I'm wrong, maybe I've spoken presumptuously, okay? But I'm currently in sackcloth and ashes because I'm mourning the state of this world. This whole world is so deceived and Jesus is coming so soon that most, quote, Christians, the lukewarm, are not seeing it. People keep saying they've been talking about Jesus is coming for thousands of years. You know, where's the promise of his coming? All these scriptures start coming to light, don't they, when you look around you. And the problem is the church has dropped the ball. We don't preach the word. What we need to do as pastors is we need to get out of this mentality of being so nice all the time okay we're supposed to love and 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 we are okay but just being so nice and and being the the peacekeepers man we're not peacekeepers we're peacemakers okay we don't keep the peace when somebody is saying something that we know is absolutely wrong you cannot love somebody without telling them the truth so if somebody comes up and I'll probably get banned for this. I don't care. If somebody comes up and they're in the LGBTQ, WXYZ, and W, you know, and they are talking to you, you can't tell them that what they're doing is okay and God loves you. God does love them, absolutely. 
Okay. But you have to tell them the truth that God doesn't approve of the things that they're doing. If you don't tell them the truth, how can you say you love them? You're just letting them go to hell. You're just letting them leave the same way they came in sin. Maybe you need to talk to them and uh, caringly. Okay. Because I love homosexuals. I have no problem with the, the people themselves. It's the sin. You don't hate the the sinner you hate the sin you know you need to learn to love what god loves and hate what he hates but you bring them the truth in love and that's any i'm not picking on them that's any one of the sins out there if somebody comes to you and they say they have a problem with pornography or drugs or alcohol or whatever the situation is say it the way it is okay say it in love but don't pat it around the edges because if people don't understand what they're doing is wrong and how wrong it is, how are they ever going to repent? You know, if we're going to turn away from our sins, we got to know they're there. These things need to be exposed. People are looking for the truth. They're not looking for some bullshit. Like I said in my last past in, in, in my last video, and it's because if 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 any one of these uh, liberal type uh, subjects was to come up to any one of the prophets of old. It Do you think Elijah would have put up with this stuff or you think he would have said it just the way it was? How about Moses, Abraham, Ezekiel? I mean, any of one. You know, all the apostles died for their faith. Why? Pretty much because they wouldn't keep their mouth shut. Well, I'm not keeping my mouth shut. Okay, I'm saying it the way it is. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. I say that so much because it is the absolute truth. And when people don't get it through their head, they're just not going to make it. If you're putting your faith in any other God, I don't need to name the all of them. You guys know who I'm talking All of them. If it's not Jesus, you're screwed, man. He's the only way there is. Okay. And as far as, as people who have already said, oh, I believe in Jesus, then follow him. Don't be a fan of Jesus. Be a follower of Jesus. For real. We need to quit talking about things and do them. Don't sit in your church and talk about going to help people and then never leave your church. You know, don't do these things. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is get out there on the street. Go serve the homeless some food. You know, they're hungry, they're cold, you know, I, I, I'm i really adamant about that because it's what I do. You know, my homeless ministry is all over the place, but other people need to do these things. There's people out there that are hurting and not, not just homeless. There are people that are living in their homes right now that are hurting, that don't have money to pay certain bills and things, you know, instead of, you know, thinking, oh, I've got X amount of dollars in the bank in the church fund. Why don't you take that out of the church fund before Jesus comes back and it's all where uh, 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 moth and rust is going to decay? Lay up your treasures in heaven, man. Why don't you go out there and take all that money that you got and go give it to the people who really need it? You know, what are you storing it up for? You know, have your faith in Jesus that in these end days, and we are coming under the tribulation within probably in the next week, I believe. We're going to see some major earth changing things. There's a billion different reasons. I've talked about it in my other videos. If you guys want to look, check them out. But when we're facing all these things, if your eyes aren't opened, you need to drop these scales from your eyes because you're just not seeing. John chapter 10, are you hearing his voice? I mean, come on, let's get real, people. All these things that we're doing, we need to drop at the cross, leave them at the cross. Okay. We can't continue to be in willful and habitual sin that we're doing all the time just because everybody else does it or because oh well it's not that big of a deal or you know it, like i said everybody does it well most people are going to hell you know if you say you believe in jesus why don't you start following him what i mean for all you christians out there who are sitting there and and, and you know you got a bible do you know where it is? You know, and if you do, praise Yeshua, praise Jesus. Thank you, God, for that, right? 
but there are too many Christians that are sitting out there. They don't know where their Bible is. And if they do know where their Bible is, how much dust is on it? You know, I'm not asking you to answer me. Just be honest with yourself. Introspect yourself. Check out what's in your heart. Are you really following Jesus? Are you reading your Bible to get to know who he is? Have you ever read your Bible all the way from cover to cover? You know, do you open it up every day and read it? Do you meditate on his word? Do you pray? You know, I've seen a, a statistic. Most pastors in America pray an average of six to 12 minutes a day. You're sickening. If one of your congregants was to come to you and say, oh, I prayed six minutes the other day, you would probably have this look at them like, are you kidding me? But introspect, look at yourself, be accountable for what you do. You know, the Lord sees everything. Be on your knees and pray. Be a real warrior for Christ. Put on your armor every day. Walk in the armor. Wear the armor. Again, I've said that in my past videos of what that means. It's not just talking about it, it's doing it. That's what we need to do. We need to put one foot in the other, one foot in front of the other. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, right? Walk in it. Go spread the word. For anyone that are watchmen out there and they see what's going on, bless you in the name of Yahushua Jesus. I love you and thank you so much. Blow your shofars. Not only physically. I have my show for, I love blowing it. And I do almost daily. Okay. But I mean, blow your show far as far as letting people know what is going on. This is so in our face. There are so many things that are going on. I'm not saying it's the end of the world. I'm not saying that what I am saying in a nutshell, and I've been really apprehensive about saying this, but I've, I've talked to several pastors and, and, and some confidants and I really got it on my heart that I believe that World War III is going to be starting here very soon, possibly Monday. Again, I don't know that that's true, but I have a very sinking feeling of that. What I do know is within the next week, something earth-changing is going to happen. So World War III, possible. Something earth-changing happening within a week I believe that is the word of God. And if I'm wrong, I'll repent of that. I'll be fully accountable for that. Again, I didn't even really want to speak it, but I am speaking it because obedience is better than sacrifice. And the Lord has been on me something serious about this. I couldn't get it out of my mind. So I am coming to everybody and I am a watchman and I'm blowing the show far telling you that Jesus is coming so so soon there's a lot of prophecies that still have to be fulfilled before he comes back so it's not the end of the world like i said i'm not saying that but what i'm saying is we're never going to know the day or the time right but we are to know the seasons and what i'm telling you right now we're in the season it's very very close i don't know much what else to say here other than Drop the scales from your eyes. You need to turn everything over to Christ. Everything, all those little things. And almost everybody has one little hidden thing that they just don't talk about. And, you know, they they probably even would know that it's wrong, but they're not addressing it. What you need to do is literally lay it down to God, all of it, every bit. If you're If you're sitting on your chair, whatever, it doesn't matter where you are. Whether you want to do it in your in your mind, whether you want to go to a church, whether you want to be on your knees, it don't matter where you are. Because through Jesus Christ, we're able to go to the throne room of God. The veil was ripped. And when we go to the Father and we lay this stuff down, he's going to be faithful for, to forgive. The blood of Jesus Christ covers all sins. We just have to accept him. And accepting him is following him. So let's put our nose to the grindstone. As watchmen, not Sarim, as branches, as watchmen. Let's start blowing this horn and let people know because you know what? Remember, if you're a watchman on a wall and you see something coming and you don't say nothing, it's your fault. It would be my fault. That's why I'm speaking out because I don't want it to be my fault. So I'm going to close this out. All praises. 
to Yahushua, Yeshua, Jesus, however you want to say it. Whether you want to say Yahua, whether you want to say Yahweh, whether you want to say Yahovah, it's all the same. My name's Joseph, but people know me by Joe and Big Joe and, and King Baby J and so on and so forth. I'm not offended by any of it. Jesus is not going to be offended by you calling one of his one of his names. He has one name. Okay. These are just different languages. It's just interpretations. Okay. I do encourage everybody to get into the Hebrew. It's amazing. And it's so much more informative than what just the English translation has become. But so all praises of the Yeshua. I wish the blessings on everybody in the name of Yeshua, that his Holy Spirit fall upon you, that the power of the Holy Spirit fall upon you. In Jesus name. Let me close with one thing though. This was an amazing um, revelation that I got. Michael Bryan, I love you, brother. You know that. You're my best friend. But we were talking about Jesus the other day, and we were talking about in the in the second cha chapter of Acts when the Holy Spirit sent. And again, I'm talking to most, most uh, believers, so you guys should know this story. Okay? But when, when the Holy Spirit came and the mighty Russian wind and the cloven tongues of fire and they sp started speaking in tongues, Everybody from that area was in the area, and there was, what, five or seven dialects, I believe, that were spoken, or languages that were spoken in that area. <laughs> when the apostles started speaking in tongues, the people were amazed because they heard it in their own language. Okay, you guys know this story, right? Well, here's something that I never even thought of before, but this is amazing. Jesus went into his ministry at 30 years old. He was baptized by John the Baptist. The Holy Spirit came down on him like a dove. That was the beginning of his ministry. Then he went out and he was ministering to multitudes of people in this same area. Do you think they all spoke the same language? I would say no. Why? Because Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, and I believe that he was speaking tongues the entire time. But nobody would ever know that because they all heard it in their own language. Praise Yeshua. He's amazing. So I love you guys. Pastor Joe, I'm out of here.